was my grandfather, Grandpa Albert. That's what we called him, right? And did I tell you he was like five feet tall and five feet wide? <laughs> he was just a wonderful being. And we used to, remember when there were Bob's Big Boy restaurants? Is yeah. there any more of those? Yeah, yeah really? OK. But we used to, on Sunday nights, he, we, we were a close family. Everybody, all the cousins and the aunts and uncles, we'd just come together. And Grandpa Albert would go to Bob's Big Boy and buy like 40 hamburgers and like a huge number of French fries and all that, right? And all the family sitting there just yakking away. And he'd go, are we going to eat or are we going to talk? <laughs> and he was five feet wide. So you know where he, what he wanted to do. And that is the issue. There's too much talking going on. That is, there's too much talking going on without clear, specific outcomes. It's not a problem. It's not a fatal flaw. It's, um, it's not even a misunderstanding necessarily, but it's what happens to a lot of groups when they're first introduced to above and below the green line. So that's just, just so, OK, it happens to all the groups. So what happens is for people to understand the below the green line, sometimes it gets disconnected from above the green. So the other analogy, which I did share with you last time, it's like groups that want to build trust believe they need to go out and do something to build trust, some special exercise, like the ropes course. I shared that with you last time, didn't I? And a uh, couple things. One, it doesn't work very well. But two, we actually don't have the time to do things separately. We could spend a lot of time on below the green line just for the purpose of building the infrastructure below the green line. But people get frustrated. Most people come to work wanting to get things done. Plus, your plates are way more full than they've ever been. Is that true? I mean, they're just overloaded. Why people show up for work is what they think why they show up for work is all over this stuff. It's about getting the job done. Just get her done, right? And, it's, and, I've, and some of these I've relabeled. It's structure, operations, and, it, and before we had processes. But it's about op, the operations. And it's about strategy which before I had patterns on there. So I'm trying to make the words even more accessible. Um, and the below the green line, which now people, I think when they come through this train, they go, yeah, you know, that's the human element. That's the sense of, I have a sense of purpose. I have real meaning in what I'm doing. I feel connected to my colleagues. I feel an identity with every student. I mean, I'm, what I'm doing and what we're all trying to do, let's say at Snowline together, is great things for kids and each other. It's not one or the other. It's for all of us. The best way to do this work is to decide on the rational outcomes. OK? You've got to understand above the green line is rational outcomes. You design meetings to have clear, specific, rational outcomes. The below the green line is the experiential outcome. The tendency will be to just forget this and just go after that. No, that's not going to work long term. It's how do you do both at the same time? The easiest way to do both is first off to have a very clear, tangible, specific outcome. By the end of this meeting, we want to have a decision about transportation that you know, meets these conditions or wh whatever that issue is, right? But we want to have that conversation honoring the experiential dynamics so that people are heard. We look at alternate ways of thinking about this, creative ways of thinking. Does that make sense? You ha and you're saying, what are the experiential outcomes that we want to achieve? The social and individual emotional outcome. 
while we're doing the work. But the real emphasis is on that work, not on below the green line. When you go to pick a process on page five of your flashcards, I mean, this is a little simple-minded, you know, I don't mean simple-minded for you, but I'm giving you a simple-minded approach, is you first go, where are we on this transportation issue? Let's just assume we had some transportation issue. Do we have, do we have outcomes for that issue or do we need to develop those together? Do we have some core design principles for this issue around transportation or is that where we start? Are we in a real tension place around transportation? You know, there's some real dynamics occurring that we need to think through differently. Are we at the place of tension? Are we actually in this transportation issue at, you know, strategy or work plan? You would pick the right method on page five based on where you are on that transportation issue and then you go, what process, you know, you narrow down like we did this morning with the negative vision then you pick the best process that gets you the experiential outcome. So right now, Snowline should be thinking about what kinds of processes bring common ground closure on some of these issues because people in the system are saying, yeah, we like that stuff, but we need to get some stuff done. So they'd be looking for some experience processes that honor that kind of feeling state that you want to achieve while you're getting her done up here. Now, every time you honor this, it accelerates not only that conversation, but every other conversation. This becomes the infrastructure that allows you to take on tougher and tougher issues quicker and qu or with more efficiency. This, this one.